my channel. I'm Tia and I upload four times a week, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. I do mostly synthetic wig related content here. We're multicultural, we're inclusive, so if you haven't subscribed, please do so. If you have, you want my little doll babies. Hi doll baby, how are you? So happy that you are here. That was a long one. Okay, so today I have a special little video for you. I'm going to compare two different hot tools. One is one that I've been using tried and true for most of the time you've been watching me. And one that I've been using more lately. And I'm going to do like pros, cons, what I'm feeling for them. Maybe which one I like better. Uh, I will link everything down below. This girl here is Janet Collections June. There is several videos on June. I will link those below as well. I'm also going to demonstrate them, so we'll do just a talk through demo completely, and then I will tell you probably at the end like which one I really like the best. So I'll show you how to use these hot tools, and techniques, things like that. So if that is something that you're interested in, this is a video because you're here because that's what you're here for. Okay. Okay. I have a lot of older wigs that are like harder to get a hold of, and wigs that I have been wanting for a long time. So I thought I would use those wigs in these types of videos because the video is more about the hot tools. I wanted to use the wigs. You can still kind of find them, but since you can't readily find them, um, I thought these would be good videos for them um, because the information about the hot tools is really the focus. So the wig that we're going to be using is Free Trust Equal. Because you know I love Free Trust Equal. This is Free Trust Equal Kenzie, and I got this off of Poshmark. These are the older Free Trust Equal wigs. They came this like, they actually came in this really nice box. You're more likely going to find these on like Poshmark, Mercari, uh, eBay. Um, they still have a lot of these in beauty supply stores though. So that's where you're going to find these most likely. Um, I have her in the color SOH627613. Uh, and it says that she, she actually came in like a lot of colors. I have her in this color too, this like purpley black color. It says that she has a deep invisible part, which I actually think she's a skin top part, but we'll look. She's heat safe up to 400 degrees and she was a big deal back in the day. This is a brand new wig, I have not used it. This is her cap construction. So she was a full cap rig, rig. She was a full cap rig, although she did have lace along the front, two combs in the front, uh, combing back adjustable straps. So this is where they were kind of getting to like that lace front situation. Um, but she still had a skin top parting, which is like a parting where there's like a plastic piece in here and it's supposed to look like faux skin. This was kind of, I guess, before where they didn't realize they could have just left that open and people could have just filled it in with powder. You know, this was earlier on before they were really figuring stuff out. Some name brand wigs still and medical wigs still have skin top party. So we're gonna try to fix her up. The two heat tools we're gonna use is my Remington curling wand. You've seen me use like a jillion and one times, which I love. And we're going to also use the Turlex hot comb, which you've also been seeing me use lately, which I did receive as a PR. Will you test this out and review this? And I did, and I've been using it ever since. So Alrighty, Lou. See, with the skin top parting, there does need to be some work to sort of flatten her out. So I thought this would be a great wig to really show you techniques on flattening out and molding that part to your head shape. She's really soft. Yeah. Not hating it. So the first thing I like to do is, especially when it has this like sort of hump thing, is I'm going to take some clips and I'm going to clip the hair down flat because when we're taking heat to the to synthetic fibers we're essentially changing the makeup of the fiber and so we want to make sure that we put that hair down as you know as tight as possible so we know what we're changing. I know some people don't like these like real thick syrupy things. They are dated because this is a dated wig however I like you know, it's really given me sort of 2000s and I really like that. And some of that's coming back. In this situation, because of this part right here, I even put it in the back to help out and just get like a flatness here. Because what I wanna do is sort of mold it to my own head. 
I am going to comb this wig out a little bit so I can see what she kind of look like, looks like. She's this beautiful, like she's got these really pronounced 613 highlights, but she's got these like golden sort of orangey colors in here. She's got that pronounced 27. She is catching a little bit. These sort of lighter fibers, especially in these older wigs, you know, they are processed a little bit more in order to be this color um, and they can tend to tangle just a little bit more. So just keep that in mind. I'm using my wide tooth comb and just starting from the bottom and working up. And you know, this is a brand new wig, so I'm just working all the way through it. And once you sort of comb through it, you can see that the colors are more melding and mixing together and they're not as sort of stark. Now that 613 is, but that was the style in terms of highlighting. They really liked those thick syrupy highlights. And I really don't mind it. I do, I am sort of drawn to some of these wigs because I cannot get them really readily anymore and they are being discontinued. So they do end up in my long-term collection a lot because I enjoy them and I know that I can't get them again. Like look at that sort of like just really sort of orangey sunset shades. Definitely a number two root is dark. There's a little bit of shedding, um, and the shedding you can tell is the lighter fibers, but that is what she looks like in terms of when she's all combed out, and I really think it's pretty. Let me look. She's in that 26-ish for a wavy wig, 24, I'm five foot six and a half. If you have this wig or had it back in the day, please let me know. Okay, you do not need to use thermal heat spray per se, but it does really help in terms of protecting the fibers. Um, so I do suggest it. Uh, this is the Jean Reno Heat Treat Thermal Spray for alternative human hair and heat resistant fibers. That would be your synthetic fibers. We're gonna use this today. I'll link this below. I got this on Amazon for $14.95 and this is two fluid ounces. I've used it quite a bit and there's like a ton in here. I mean, you don't need a ton. I kind of want to use it especially because is that and keep this in mind because this is a skin top parting so this isn't just lace there is a piece of plastic essentially so we're going to be very mindful of that so i'm just going to and it's got to see that beautiful mister just mist it a little bit and just the area that i'm going to concentrate the heat on one of the cons of my Remington wand and I'm I think they probably have an updated version I legitimately got this from and you can even see the goodwill for like a dollar and it did work and it's I, I mean I got this years ago and it still works um but this one has dials on it so I have it on between 30 and 25 and so there's no like temperature number you can go online and they give you like estimates and i've looked it up several times and i think i think 30 was like 400 and you had to sort of guesstimate back from there so that's definitely a con i do like this curling wine and wand and i definitely like the remington brand so if there's an updated one that actually has heat temperatures um i'd say go with that one of the c pros is that it really just is like perfect in terms of ergonomics and gets right in there for what you're trying to do so what I want to do is just let this dry for one more second and we'll say so as a pro for this it does have um, temperature numbers which you can make hotter or cooler right here so that's a pro right off the bat because you know what temperature it is this i think has a two-in-one sort of versatility because you have the comb which i like to get sort of really down deep especially if there's permatease or if there's sort of filler fibers that you want to train you can use these teeth to really get down deep in that and if you wanted to comb through and maybe do like a little flip or straighten just a little piece out sometimes i don't like the way right in the front that's a plus, but then it has this sort of rounded edge that mimics this curling wand that you can then turn and still have that available. So for that reason, I like that with the uh, this particular 
hot comb. So let's go in. Um, I do like the length and the area that you have to work with. Okay, so you can get in and not really be worried about getting too close to your head. So let's just go in and see. We're just going to work with this and just really quick movements. So we're not sitting on any one piece for very long. I like to pull the hair taut. So I'm making sure that I'm not actually creating any, uh, you know, bubbles or bumps or creases or anything. And do not feel shy to readjust clips as needed. And where this plastic piece is sewn into the cap, sometimes I feel like you have to actually press and move, press and move. And you can actually see the difference. I'm going to press and move over here. And right in the front, this is where I like the curling one because you can get right up in there and it's not getting close to your head. But you can see right here that with the press and move, this is now flatter and you don't see that bumpy wave situation. And I don't like to go too ham. Once I start seeing what I need and look I'm going for, then, um, then I stop. So I'm just going to readjust and make sure that I'm seeing what I want to see. The other thing that I like to do is actually take this and run it right along the seam. Um, and I feel like that helps make it a little flatter as well. And then it gets this back seam. Not only does this flatten the wig, but it actually like melds it to your head so that it's molded more to your head shape. So let's go ahead and readjust what we got going on on this side. And some of these older ones really have this very pronounced seam. Some of the new ones too, do too, where they're, you know, where the seat, you know, the part is done and they're just like hair. So I always like to smooth in all directions right around that uh, rear seam. Just to sort of, so it's not just this like delineation of you know, now the part's done. <laughs> and I'm just using these type of motions. So that's how you use the curling wand. And that's what I really do enjoy about the curling wand and sort of the pros. The one thing I like about this, now I hated hot combs. I had one from Hot and Golden Hot or something. And it, for one, I thought it was too heavy. It's very heavy. Um, this one is so light. It's so light. I can't even tell you. I have a full video up on it and um, I have a link where you can go check it out. But it's so light. It also does, you can see it in the original review, there is an attachment here um, so that you won't burn yourself if that is something that you are worried about. Anytime you use heat tools, you have the ability to be burning yourself. So be very careful. If you do not feel comfortable, use a wig head. Do not do it on yourself. You know, I've been doing that a long time and I prefer to do it on myself, but I also know that I can burn myself. So I'm not saying that you do, you should do this on yourself if you do not feel comfortable um, or if you feel like, you know, you might burn yourself. Don't do that. But the nice thing about this one is these teeth, okay? So you can see these teeth. Now on this one, it doesn't have any filler fibers, but if you can see, let me take these clips out. There's two ways that I feel like this takes it to the next level. It already looks better. It already looks better. I am going to sort of brush this back part. So now we've flattened it, but I want to sort of brush the hairs and sort of train them. So yes, we've made it flat, but we don't want it to be unnatural and not moving. So if there are any like filler fibers and some of these older wigs, especially with these, you know, lighter pieces, they, they tend to have uh, broken a little bit because, you know, when I, um, the shedding, it, they, they could be broke off. I also sometimes like to do this sort of brush away. This is where the guard can help you if you feel a little bit like you might burn yourself. But I sometimes like to just do, especially if there's baby hairs, you can sort of brush them up in if you don't want to use them. I did that with uh, Valentino. But you can give yourself sort of that curtainy situation without really having to do too much. Because just that brushing through with the heat is doing so much for you. See, that? see? Look how beautiful. Okay, let me just comb through and we're going to put some powder in. The one thing about these older ones is they sort of just, instead of, it's not like sombraed through, um, they sort of just layered it where they were like, okay, this color, okay, that color. So down here it looks really pretty, but you have to make sure that um, you've combed it properly uh, because see the underside is just like, okay, this color. 
and then once I have it where I want it, I do sort of like go in and kind of break it up just a little bit because it's molded to my hair, but I don't want it to be like a helmet. I think I'm actually going to cut a V in this lace just to make it seem like it's going up into my hairline. See if you can see that now it kind of goes in a little bit where it would sometimes at your part. There is a tiny bit of lace to do a little bit of customization. So you can see it has a tendency maybe to get a little squirrely towards the bottom just because of those colors. I have another wig in this similar color, um, maybe this exact color, which is um, Alpine Meadow or Danity. I'm not positive. I'll leave the card. So I like to just maybe accentuate, ex accentuate. And then what I'm gonna do too is take a little bit of this, this Bonfi Natural Oil Free Wig Shine Spray just on the ends, just so that it doesn't get too flyaway-esque. You don't need a lot. Oh yeah, look how pretty that looks now. Just takes that, that, what's the word? frizziness looking stuff um, just takes the frizz off of it a little bit and then accentuate those curls so there you go that's what it you know that's how you can use the different heat tools so overall I gave you my pros and cons so overall if I could I would use both of these if I could, I would use both of these, okay? That would be my ideal, <laughs> that would be my ideal combination. If I could only have one, I would choose this. I would choose this for the price, the ability to choose your heat temperature, the versatility, um, the weight. Because I mean, if you're doing wigs, like you just don't want it to be heavy. Um, this is the one I would choose just because it has a few more options. They're both awesome. Um, they both have their place, but like I said, because this does have sort of that longer barrel, I do like that about but it. In general, that's really the only advantage it has over um, this particular hot comb. And since this has other uh, features that the curling wand doesn't, I would have to uh, go ahead and choose this. And you can go ahead and do exactly what I was doing. Um, I just like the length. Uh, for safety purposes but in general that's how I feel if I had to choose one I would choose a hot comb if I could have them both that would be my ideal setup which I do um, but you know for the purpose of this video I never thought something would replace my hot comb or my curling wand especially a hot comb because I've had bad experiences with them in the past but I really enjoy um, this particular one. They do have a curling wand, so if you would like me to just that one from the curling wand from this brand and see how I like it, um, go ahead and put that down below. I'm more than happy to do that. And that's what I have uh, for this video, which is, you know, sort of battle of the heat tools and how to use them, curling wand versus hot comb. So let me know your thoughts about these tools and what you think of them. And if you have some scrappies, you so they have, thank you so much. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.